You guys have heard me talk a lot about finasteride. 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 But today we're going to find out if topical finasteride is better than oral finasteride. So today I'm going to rehash this topic and we're going to find out based on the latest literature what is best. So we know finasteride and dutasteride are the best drugs to combat androgenetic alopecia. And we have a lot of data behind this because we have been using these medications for hair loss for over 30 years now. Problem is, there's been a lot of reports of some negative side effects that are associated with these medications. Things like lowered libido, erectile dysfunction, and more recently, depression. While these side effects aren't so common, in other words, the overwhelming majority of patients who use these medications only get the positive benefits of hair loss stabilization and hair regrowth, they're still concerning. And I'll go back to my old adage, what's the point of having hair if your cock doesn't work? And that's why the rationale for topical finasteride came to be. The theory is, that the finasteride will only reduce DHT locally at the level of the hair follicle when applied topically and not reduce systemic DHT, thereby avoiding all these unwanted side effects. But before we go there, let's quickly revise what causes balding in the first place. So people with androgenetic alopecia more readily convert testosterone to dihydrotestosterone at the level of the hair follicle. These hair follicles are genetically prone and when in contact with this dihydrotestosterone start to miniaturize all the way to a point where the hair becomes invisible to the naked eye, thereby causing balding. So testosterone in the body gets converted to dihydrotestosterone by this enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. What medications like finasteride and dutasteride do is block this enzyme, 5-alpha reductase, thereby decreasing the amount of DHT or dihydrotestosterone in the body and slightly increasing testosterone in the body. Therefore, you have less dihydrotestosterone circulating in your body to interact with those follicles. And now remember guys, Finasteride is not the same as minoxidil. Minoxidil helps hair growth in a completely different way using a different mechanism. And what minoxidil does is increase the growing phase of your hair. So you'll get thicker and more hairs per square centimeter, but it doesn't nearly prevent hair loss like finasteride does. And to my patients out there that only use either finasteride or minoxidil alone, there was a new study that was done that showed that these two medications in combination are superior to one or the other alone. So what they did in this study is they used a bunch of patients and they divided them up into three groups. One of the groups got topical minoxidil twice daily only. The other group got a combination of topical finasteride with topical minoxidil. And the third group got topical finasteride only. And if you look at this graph, you can clearly see that topical finasteride in combination with minoxidil was a lot more effective than either one on their own. And interestingly, you could see from the graph that topical minoxidil twice a day was even more effective than only topical finasteride. It's an interesting thing to note. But let's get back to finding out whether oral finasteride is better than topical finasteride. So to date, the largest and most comprehensive study we have comparing oral finasteride to topical finasteride was done in 2022 by Perucini and colleagues. And the results of this study came out, I thought they were in short astounding because what they showed is that at 12 weeks and at 24 weeks, topical finasteride was just as effective as one milligram daily oral finasteride. But what about the side effects? Well, this same study showed that the side effects from the topical finasteride were equal to the amount of side effects from the placebo group and were far less than the reported side effects of the oral finasteride. Right. So that's good news, right? They also showed that the blood concentrations of finasteride were a hundred times less in the topical group than in the oral group. So that means that people that did topical finasteride had a hundred times less finasteride in their blood. But very interestingly, reduction of DHT in the plasma of the oral group versus the topical group weren't that profoundly different. With the topical finasteride group, DHT levels decreased by about 35% from baseline. And in the oral finasteride group, DHT levels decreased by about 55% 
from baseline. So what this shows is that even though levels of finasteride in the blood were a hundred times less in the topical finasteride group, they still got a 64% efficacy in the reduction of serum DHT, which means something very interesting, that a very low dose oral finasteride is likely just as effective as a one milligram. So when the results of the study came out, I was nothing short of astounded and I started changing my practice a little bit. And I put a larger percentage of my patients on topical finasteride. But what I found over time is patients that I switched from oral to topical finasteride, about 50% of them had a major, major regression in their hair growth. So what was going on here? I think there were three major factors that contributed to the success of the oral finasteride in these patients. Number one is simple compliance. It was a lot easier to take a tablet once a day than to remember to put on the topical after you shower, before you shower, in the morning or at night. So compliance was made a lot easier with the tablet. Number two, finasteride half-life and 5-alpha reductase inhibition. So finasteride has a half-life of about seven hours, but once it binds to that 5-alpha reductase enzyme, that enzyme is irreversibly inhibited for about a month. And in the oral group, this inhibition was a lot more profound than in the topical group. And the third major factor was the different topical finasterides on the market. Every single one has a different concentration. It comes from a different place who source the active ingredients from other places that are different. They also have different compounding practices. So all of this put a lot of variability in the product they were using topically. So how can we counteract these issues to make sure that topical finasteride works as best as possible for you? Well, our solution for our patients came by way of the delivery system of the topical finasteride. This delivery system or solvent is called the Siloxa system and was developed by Zion Health. And what they've managed to do is tackle three important elements to ensure topical finasteride efficacy. Number one is that the concentration of the topical finasteride is an order of magnitude larger than that of normal topicals, 2.5% versus 0.25%. The second thing Siloxa system does is prevent absorption by binding the drug to these silicone-based nanoparticles and delivering it directly to the hair follicle itself. Lastly, and probably most importantly, they showed that the contact time with the skin of the active ingredient is 10 times longer than that of conventional topicals that are on the market. And this is good and important because if you miss a dose of your topical, it's not as serious in your hair growth journey. And if you want a comprehensive analysis on how this product works, I do have a very long and boring video about it and I'll put the link in the description below. So in summary, should you do oral or topical finasteride? Well, I think for most people, oral finasteride is cheap, effective, easy to do, and has limited side effects. But if you're in the category of people who have either, number one, had side effects from finasteride before, or you're really, really worried about the potential deleterious effects of finasteride, then topical may be for you, as long as it's the right topical with good data behind it, properly compounded, and some cool technology. Now, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. What worked better for you? oral or topical, put in the comments below. I'll try my best to get back to every single one of you. And if you like this sort of content, I make it pretty much every day so you can follow for more.